Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Welcome in any case. This is somehow the live version of the Acquia podcast. Mohammed Razem asks, so if I'm not familiar with Symfony, will I have a hard learning curve for Drupal 8? Adopting very Symfony components has had a huge impact on Drupal. However, the thing, people need to be careful to not confuse the parts that are done with Symfony versus the parts that are done with PHP 5.3. PHP 4 and PHP 5.3 are different languages. Just conceptually, structurally, um, you know, they're, they're different languages that happen to be mostly backward compatible, uh, but that's about it. So Drupal 8's biggest shift is it is a PHP 5.3 system. We have ported Drupal to a new language, and that is the biggest jump for people. Symfony is a PHP 5.3 component library that we're using a lot of pieces of to save time and because they've already solved a lot of hard problems in ways that are really good. You don't need to know like Symfony full stack in order to use Drupal. Understanding the HTTP kernel out of Symfony would be helpful, but you, know, you don't need to go build a couple of projects with Symfony full stack in order to get your hands around Drupal. You do need to be able to understand PHP 5.3 development classes, objects, not using globals, uh, dependency injection, um, events as a concept. You know, these are all things that are not specific to Drupal 8 and not specific to Symfony. They're specific to PHP 5.3 and modern PHP development. You do need to be familiar with those to work with Drupal 8. As, as an you example to that, um, in Drupal 7 and earlier, if you wanted to extend something with a mechanism other than an alter hook, there were, in core, 8, 11 different ways of doing that, and then a half dozen more in contrib. In Drupal 8, all of that has been consolidated into a new plugin system that Chris's initiative was primarily responsible for building. That plugin system is PHP 5.3, objects, dependency injection, um, you know, all of this good stuff that's modern code. Not a lick of it is Symfony but that's still modern PHP 5.3 code that, if you're not used to that, is still going to be a jump. I think it's a great tip for people to, you know, if we're going to jump in on Drupal 8, let's really get up to speed on all the new great stuff on PHP 5.3. If I could uh, hop in on that real quick, you know, to answer more directly about Drupal specifically, you know, if, you, if you're a Symfony user and you've been using it um, you know, in any of your projects in the past, then obviously you're going to be able to carry some of that knowledge forward. Uh, the place, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Larry, but the places where we're primarily using that, I think are uh, CMI's using it for its YAML parsing. Uh, obviously, the routing system that we've talked about is using it. Um, there are uh, uh, the dependency injection container, which is awesome, and you absolutely should learn no matter what, just for your own well-being. Um, but, you know, with the exception of the dependency injection container, most of the rest of that stuff is behind various layers of, of Drupal stuff that you're probably not going to need to deal with unless you absolutely need to deal with it. And even then, the only one you're likely to dig into, I think, is, is um, beyond the dependency injection container is their routing. Uh, and you would have to really need to do something routing specific at that point. So, you know, Drupal still separates you pretty heavily from an awful lot of the Symfony uh, components that we're using. Um, there are Drupal wrappers around a, a huge portion of that, just like the plugin system that Larry mentioned uh, provides wrappers around Doctrine Commons annotation uh, parsing. You know, you don't have to write an awful lot of anything there, and in fact, our, our implementation is um, a little interesting, and I like it a lot, but it's not necessarily what Doctrine does out of the box. So um, I think the short answer is probably no. You don't need to know Symfony in order to, to do Drupal. So a frustrated friend of mine posted, question, Plugins, plugin types, plugin managers, arg, with four R's, how? Okay, fair enough. Chris, this uh, one's all you. 
<laughs> this one's all me. Uh, a plugin type is something is a term that we use colloquially to refer to a type of plugin. You actually won't see that in code anywhere. You might see it in a couple of comments or something like that. But a plugin type is just you know words that we use. Plugin managers are actually a class uh, that composes together the ability to um, discover where a plugin exists. You can think of this in terms of hooks, right? Uh, info hooks within Drupal 7 have largely been replaced by uh, plugins uh, within Drupal 8. Uh, so when we talk about discovery, that's what we mean. Uh, we even provided a, an info hook discovery class that could continue to discover your old info hooks and treat them as though they were plugins, uh, which is a really interesting thing to do, and I would heavily encourage you not to do it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so... Plugins are just the individual implementations of that. Uh, there have been some sessions on this. Uh, I think my, my session at um, NiceCamp uh, went especially well. Uh, I attempt to explain exactly these things in it. Um, and, you know, anybody should feel free to, to ping me on IRC about this topic. Uh, but we do have a bit of documentation on Drupal.org. Uh, but covers the concepts pretty well and, and how most of it goes together. For the most part, developers shouldn't really need to be worrying about a lot of these concepts uh, unless they are transferring uh, an info hooks that they created in their module over to the plugin system, which is a really great thing to do. Um, and I would heavily encourage it, and I would also heavily support it across IRC. Um, so if, if people are needing me, feel free to ping me. I'm more than happy to help. Well, Mary, do you have any closing final bits of wisdom for us today. Drupal 8 is a big jump. There is really no way to pretend otherwise. But it's a big jump that we didn't have the choice to make. I, I think that's something that um, you know, we, we do need to collectively understand. PHP 4 is a dead language. We have the, the ability to either leap forward and catch up and try and you know, push forward in the new model, or sit on a sinking island until <laughs> no one wanted to touch Drupal because you know, it's like trying to touch Perl code written in 92 or something like that. You know, th this wasn't core contributors or you know, core developers conspiring to make life difficult for people. This was, you know, we have to catch up with the rest of the, the industry or we're going to die alone. You know, there's you know, a lot of things Drupal has done very well. Um, you know, in terms of community management and community, community building, we're, I think, second to none in the PHP world. Um, you know, some of the stuff we've done with CMI is amazing. Um, you know, we actually have a solution for how do you compile code at runtime and still keep it secure. We actually solved that. And I've never seen anyone else do that. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that's checks being amazing. Um, you know, Dr Drupal has a lot that it's done. You know, the, our, our routing system that we're using is built on Symfony, but the actual pipeline was a collaboration between Drupal and Symfony CMF that now Easy Publish is going to be using eventually as well. So, you know, there, there's a lot of benefits to us and to PHP by collaborating more. Um, you know, it, it's not just a matter of you know, saving time ourselves or you know, being lazy. There's an actual huge benefit to collaboration that we see within Drupal all the time, and now we can see through the broader community. Chris, any final thoughts for us today? Yeah, um, just kind of like jumping on a, a bit of what Larry was getting at there and getting a bit more specific for a moment, you know, one of the things that we've adopted uh, uh, with regard to kind of beginning to eat more of the PHP community's dog food, if you will, uh, is uh, standardizing on Composer. Um, and Composer, for those who are not in the know, and I mentioned this in my blog post, uh, but it's uh, a, a tool that can be used in order to literally compose together various uh, PHP libraries. And you can say, I need Symfony's autoloader, I need Symfony's HTTP kernel, I need Guzzle, I need Twig, I need 
aesthetic. I need Drupal's plugin system, maybe, if I get my way. Um, you know, and so this becomes a, a way for you to actually um, uh, put in a, in a single file um, all of the base level components that you need in order to run. Well, guess what? Drupal has one of those. It's got a composer.json file sitting right inside of it, um, and it specifies all the Symfony components and Guzzle and Aesthetic and a, and a handful of other things that I'm not thinking of right off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, this means that, uh, that a good chunk of what Drupal is doing today, uh, primarily our, our dependency injection container, uh, is taking these things and weaving them together in the way that we want. Uh, and so uh, this is very powerful. And this also means that we, as Drupal, can begin to abstract our own components into something that other other PHP systems could be making use of. We're joining the broader PHP community with this change. Yes, we absolutely are. And what's even more interesting about this is, you know, you start talking about abstracting um, various Drupal-isms, if you will, you know, our secret sauce, the things that really make us us, um, and, and putting them into these sorts of libraries and making them available to the greater PHP world. Um, you know, anybody who's a topical expert in one of those things, like, their, their potential influence um, out in the PHP world just increased dramatically because if those components start being used outside of Drupal, guess who they're going to call in order to implement it? Drupalers who know it, right? So, um, you know, this is, this is um, a really interesting way to begin sharing our code and our culture with the greater PHP community. Thank you to everyone who came and listened to us. And thank you, Chris and Larry, for the fascinating update on where we are with Drupal 8, uh, the importance of Symfony versus PHP. I am personally looking forward to seeing all of you at a Drupal event uh, somewhere in the near future. Thank you, Chris Vanderwater from Commerce Guys. Thank you, Larry Garfield from Palantir. Thank you, audience. If you enjoyed it, please let me know, and uh, maybe we can do more things like this. Um, my contact information is jam at acquia.com, J-A-M at Acquia.com. Chris, how can people find you online? Uh, the best way is uh, at EclipseGC on Twitter. Larry? Uh, I blog occasionally at GarfieldTech.com and uh, at Palantir.net. I am Krell, C-R-E-L-L, -L, on Twitter, in IRC, and on Drupal.org. And another shameless plug, please do follow the uh, Palantir Twitter feed and or a website. I'm a fan of the Palantir newsletter, so sign up for that too. Um, and awesome. just to keep things simple, um, my Twitter handle is at Horn Cologne. So anyway, thanks everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye. So, a guy called. Gabor Hoichi I think has I've got some... Who? <laughs> what, what reality chooses to do is obviously completely different. And, you know... <laughs> and that's reality's choice. And that's yeah. reality's choice. We have no control over reality. Um, uh, Culture decides what truth is. Truth, unfortunately, is unaware of this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. There will probably still be rough edges in places we hate it, but, well, it's software. Uh, but that should be a lot simpler. Drupal's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, Always. Kind of, oh, that, that's just software except for Drupal. <laughs>